All right, how you doing? We're going to talk about uh, this idea of factoring using the grid method here. Uh, you probably can't see it up there. Uh, but anyhow, with this grid method, what we're going to do is we're just going to go through the steps that I talk about for factoring. Uh, this grid method is used for something called the AC method. The AC method basically says that we take the, in, the, in a quadratic, we take the AX squared term, so basically your quadratic term, your X squared term, you multiply it by your constant term. And what we do from there is that we then look at those factors and determine, okay, what were the two things that we combined to make negative 11? So that's what we're going to do. Just going to organize it in the grid to maybe help you. So what I hope you understand is that when we first have this, okay, this uh, trinomial is the, the product or the written as a sum, okay, of a binomial times a binomial. So a binomial times a binomial has four terms, but our answer has three terms. So that means along the way, a pair of terms had to be combined. And with that being stated, okay, after that multiplication happened and you combine your like terms, you'll see that generally it is always going to be this middle term here. And that is called the BX term. So that's the term we're trying to create. So step one, we're going to go through and we're going to say, okay, 2X squared wasn't combined with anything. So we're going to draw this grid and neither was this 12. So we're going to draw up the grid really quickly. And what we have there is this grid. Now, each one of these boxes essentially just represents all the four terms that we originally had that simplified into this three-term statement. So one of the things we need to take notice of is 2x squared wasn't combined with anything, and this 12 wasn't combined with anything. And this is something that is special for all quadratics uh, that are trinomials, that are binomial times a binomial. So what I have here now is that this 2x squared into this next step, okay, we just fill it in, 12x squared, and two. So this is step two. Step three is to simply do the AC method. The AC method states that we multiply the x squared term times the, um, times the constant. And what you have there is that this is going to be 24x squared. Okay, so what we now do with this is that we now look at the factors of 24 that can be manipulated to make negative 11. So what I do is I just like to generally write that out. So I take 24. And if I want to put x squared, that's fantastic. I just have to put an x with all of it. So this is going to be 1x times 24, 24x. So then I have 2x times 12x. So then I have 3x times 8x. And then I have 4x times 6x. And essentially out of this list, what I'm looking for is there's something that I can multiply together and makes positive 24, but when summed together, makes negative 11. So generally what most kids can do, you can go through this relatively quickly. So 1 and 24, it doesn't matter if I make them both positive or negative, there's no way I'm getting negative 11. 2 and 12, if I make them both positive or both negative, there's still no way I'm getting negative 11. But if I come down here and I make these three, this 3 and 8 make them positive, I get positive 11, but here's the thing you have to be careful of. It's got to be a negative. So if I take negative 3 and multiply it by negative 8, so let's say I do that, because that's what makes them a negative 11. The last thing I just want to check to make sure that this is okay. If when multiplied together, does it make a positive? And yes, it does. Negative times a negative is a positive. So what I now have here is that what this essentially allows me to do, these two terms, is when I multiply them together, it gives me positive 24x squared. And when I add them, sum them, negative 3 plus negative 8 is negative 11x. So now what I have here is that these are the two unknown terms that I combined out of this statement to make negative 11x. So now what I do is I go ahead and I plug them into my gener into uh, this general grid that I've got going on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 3x and negative 8x. Now, what I want to make note of here very quickly, it doesn't matter if you put the negative 3 down here and the negative 8 up here. Uh, you'll get the same answer uh, regardless. So now I go ahead and go through. So now I'm at this point. And the last thing that I have to do is I've got this set up in the AC method. If your teacher in another school tell you the AC method, generally what they did is that they broke this apart and wrote it in one big statement, and then you had to do this thing called factoring by grouping. Well, what we've done is we've got all this thing grouped together for us, and that's all we're simply going to do now. So I first look at, okay, if I take a look at this row, all right, what I'm going to look at is what do I have to multiply to get 2, and what can I use to get a negative 8? Well, 2 and negative 8 are both multiples of just 2. So that's the first thing I look at is just the numbers. Then I look at the variables. Well, x squared is x times x, and here's an x. So if I only use 1x, that will help me get just this singular x, and one of them will help me get this one. So the next thing I look at 
is I come down here and I go, okay, how do I complete this grid? Well, 2x needs another x. So boom, there it is. So there's that one. Then I go to this one. x times what makes negative 3x? Negative 3. 2x, uh, 2x times what makes negative 8x? Well, negative 4. And there you have it. You've got your answer. And the answer is 2x minus 3 times the quantity of x minus 4. And you've essentially just factored a quadratic. So I hope that helps.